the what is the ex exact pain for building react application with ssr hmr and all the configuration in place and how nextjs solves our problem and what else nextjs can do right so let's start this discussion with a metaphor so so imagine you are a foodie like me and you you, you like to eat a lot right and whenever you want to eat something you go to the supermarket every time when you are hungry right the first scenario here shows that you are hungry every time and you are going to the supermarket every time when you are hungry right while in the second case what you do is you spend 45 minutes in the supermarket and you uh, make a list about what you need and you uh, look around what you need for the complete month and you gather everything and fetch uh, and like buy everything and come back home and put everything in a fridge and whenever you when you whenever you're hungry you uh, open the fridge and you pull out whatever you want want to eat so the uh, second scenario is pretty much which is something something called as client side rendering once the so let's go on go, go on to the next slide so this is typical server side rendering when clients has many trips many as many many trips to server uh, to for the slash foo route there is there is another request and slash var route there is another request which is traditional ssr which is followed but in the in the client side rendering once the abjs is fetched all of the content content is being served by abjs by the javascript itself which is client side rendering can i can i get best of both the worlds <clears throat> So let's try and understand what is JavaScript SEO. So JavaScript SEO is the practice of writing JavaScript that with, that ensures that uh, you write JavaScript which is rendered correctly and indexed by the search engines as, as well, right? So you can see the JavaScript SEO uh, includes the, the JavaScript writing practices plus traditional SEO. So let's understand how Google works, how Google index the web pages, right? It does it in two waves. In the first wave, it acts like a normal crawler, right? It hits the HTTP, it hits the site with one HTTP request. On in the response of that particular HTML, it crawls all the all of the links in that uh, HTML, uh, HTML, right? In the response. While in the second phase, however, you should note that in the first phase, it, phase, it does not render the JavaScript, right? While in the second phase, what it does is it comes back to the site again with all of the rendering uh, with the uh, rendering resources required to render the JavaScript in the first place, and then it renders the JavaScript complete, and then it starts to call the website. So in the in the case of CSR, the client side rendering, if the Google comes to the uh, in the first wave of the Google's uh, Google's indexing, it will see this nothing, right? So why do Google need two-step process? Because more rendering resources, more monetary power, monetary cost, more electricity, more processing power, more cost, right? So Google now is talking to SSR, not and like leaving CSR behind. So what is isomorphic in the first place, right? You might uh, make these kind of reactions when you listen to this isomorphic thing. Like what, what are you talking about? Is it something related to chemistry? Is it misspelled isotopes? So isomorphic apps are also known as JavaScript, uh, universal JavaScript are those JavaScript which, which that code runs on both client and the server. Let me, let me try and explain. So example, this is client and server. Clients initiate an HTTP request to server and uh, server generates an initial view of the web page, the initial HTML page. And server responds with the generated HTML view. Client renders the HTML and then fetches the app bundle and all of the subsequent actions are handled by the client side itself. So you got both of the worlds, right? You got, you got CSR as well and the CSR together. Why do you use this approach? Initial page load performance is good. As you can see that initial page load performance in SSR is good. Why? Because in CSR, client sees nothing until the, uh, until the app is, the bundle is fetched and it is rendered correctly, right? In the SSR, the initial page load performance is better than CSR. And it is actually noticeable when your app is quite big, right? SEO, you get the points on SEO. And obviously the, 
uh, users using the low bandwidth like mobile users uh, can, can, can get benefit from using this approach, right? So this is isomorphic app. Can I implement SSR in your project? Yes, you can. But uh, so uh, having all the configuration in one place, like having all the configuration with HMR, SSR and all of the configuration you need uh, and automatic code splitting also, including all the, uh, all the configurations takes time and it will have a big, big piece of part in your development time, right? Uh, the, and the time which will be left for developing the uh, more, more uh, business logic will be uh, like will will be less, right? You are you are spending more of the time to configuring your project rather than spending a, a time to uh, time for your uh, more business logic and more uh, logic part. So this is a thing which uh, which actually is is getting solved by next years. So there can be two approaches, right? If you are doing server side rendering, one thing is that you need a dedicated server for server side rendering, which serves your React uh, React application and your backend logic, your backend server, right? There can be two different server in the first approach. There can be two different server, right? And you need some mechanism to communicate between these two servers, right? You have JWT tokens or you may uh, you may have some other tokens to communicate the session between these two backend, backend server. And they, they both, have, uh, both are on different origins also. You need to manage them also. Another approach can be, you, you, it can be a single monolithic server where the React uh, so React application is served on the same server. Also, your backend backend application using some proxy or X Y Z. But both of these approaches takes time to configure in your React application, which you and I don't have, right? So, what's next? Finally, so next is a React framework for building uh, server side rendered applications, which is uh, which 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 has so you know you don't need to configure anything for, uh, for getting started with node uh, for next basically you uh, you have all the configuration in need, uh, you need in the first place J uh, start the uh, start the development right away like you can you you can have hmr ssr and all the configurations automatic code splitting also without no configuration you just start the development right away so let's get started with next so it's a very kind of uh, hello world example so you are installing react React DOM and next with next uh, with npm install and you are adding a script proper a script property in the a package or JSON. These are the script property next next build next start and I'm making a functional component inside this page's directory. So what's uh, next JS does it all does that is all of the JavaScript files inside this page's directory. Uh, it makes routes automatically about these pages. So if I, if I have a about.js inside pages directory, automatically the about route will be created, right? So if I'm making slash index.js, it is the home page. It's the slash route, right? So this is the functional component I'm making. That's index.js, which is says which says welcome to next years. And you simply run the uh, run the project. And when you will see the output in the browser, you should see the server side rend rendering works automatically when you check the page source and you don't have to do anything to configure uh, with this. So next link is one of the, maybe you can say analogous to React Router when you are navigating from one page to another in Next.js. So basically you are navigating from one page to another using Next, uh, to, uh, to the About page here, About Route here using, you, you, using link. We'll, we'll see this in the further, further slides and in the demo, the demo later. What else can Next.js do? It has automatic code splitting, which means that it's a it's a property of Webpack which says that uh, all the necessary code, only the necessary code which is required to render the current page, current route is only sent. Nothing else. All the unnecessary co code are not sent to the uh, to the client side unless it is required. So how it exactly works? It works like this. So for example, this uh, on clicking on this button, uh, uh, another page is rendered like si slash sign up is rendered for example let us say so while while if you click this button and this page is actually uh, are made in next years so this is my uh, like my professional work or so so when you click on this button you will notice so in the developer console you will notice that the code for sign up in js is fetched uh, on the client uh, on the client side and you and it it is automatically handled by next years you can also prefetch this page that you can define whether this code should should uh, get prefetched uh, in the app.js bundle 
and you don't uh, you can write the prefetch as a proper uh, as a prop in the link tag which is just uh, which i just showed you so that you it, it can be prefetched this code can be prefetched rather than fetching this uh, on the on demand so you as you as you can see this code is uh, fetched on demand right so this is this so this is done automatically by next year so you don't need to configure anything for it for it so benefits it saves a lot of time uh, it's easy to maintain it's say it's it saves a lot of time uh, like uh, you can run to the development uh, you can like write the, you write your main application logic faster like like you can jump to the writing your dev, uh, application logic faster than uh, like you don't need to spend a lot of time in configuring uh, configuring it is easy to maintain the code is quite easy like uh, like or if you will add the configurations all you need in the first place then it will be uh, it will be more uh, it will be more like a uh, chaos thing and all and it will be easy to maintain if you if you switch to ne next years and you get the both of the words like you get csr and ssr like the main basic isomorphic app you're building and all the configuration in place so let's see a short demo so this is uh, one of the repositories I've posted uh, on this link so you can you can check this link in my uh, you can check out CS mother as a git repository and, and navigate to this repository so in the pages directory you can see three of the pages so this is about Link, uh, uh, about uh, route will be automatically created and will be which will be rendered which is the home page and the post pages automatically and you can you should see this server.js right so all your backend code uh, happens to happens to be set here here in the uh, server.js you can you can see the um, express server like you like you make your make a normal as, uh, express server with all the all of the routes in place and and uh, and the next js part also in this uh, is thing it's aut automatically handled by this uh, by the next property so let's run this uh, let's quickly run this i hope you can see the so let's go to our uh, it is already in use. It's already running. So you can see the navigation part running here, uh, like this is the navigation part, like you can see the navigation part running and you should also check out the page source and you should see that it is already rendered. So when Google comes to this page automatically it will index it right and you don't need to configure anything for that like i haven't i haven't wrote any of the configuration to uh, i like code to run this uh, uh, to make the ssr work or hmr work automatically it, it it is working automatically right right so you can refer to this this repository if you want to get started with next year's uh, like automatically you can get to uh, study this also a bit about performance right so one thing is that since um, in the client side code splitting works automatically right so for example if your app just bundle is of 10 mb uh, 10 mb is quite far like it's if it, if it's at 3 mb uh, if the code splitting is working fine like you will not, you will face a better performance in the client side right also and uh, so all in all of the configuration in place you have everything with you to start with the to build a basic um, basic application you no, don't need to start up start up with the with your react application yeah so so you might feel something like this now a bit of a boring talk or something so a bit about me i'm a full stack at iopop uh, you can search me with cs madhav and um, medium linkedin or twitter questions